Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Second Act Actors. I'm your host, Janet McMorty, and I was and still am a medical doctor simultaneously trying to pursue a career in acting. This is episode number eight. My guest this week is Sarah Cleveland. Sarah Cleveland's first act was mom or mama as you'll hear in both traditional definition of the word mom and very non-traditional definition of the word mom. She and I have a ton in common. We joined the union together. We got our boat licenses together. We are audition twins. We pretty much always audition for the exact same thing, which is really cool uh, as well. She's a fantastic human being. I love chatting with her. As you'll see, there were immense amounts of audio issues again this week. Once again, you can tell that this is one of the earlier episodes that I recorded because I hopefully have learned some things along the way and have fixed the audio. So apologies, Sarah. Apologies, everyone. She sounds super shouty. She's not a shouty person, but she sounds really shouty in this episode. So I'm so sorry. But once again, just like always, the story is still there and her story is super, super interesting. I hope you enjoy Sarah Cleveland. me a bit about yourself and your journey into this wonderful world of acting we found ourselves in uh so I am a mom to three girls and wife to my my husband Hugh I have a wide range of of age of my girls here they're 10 16 and 25 um and if you were to do the math I know people start to (laughs) question a little bit they're like hmm um my husband was a single dad when I met him. So uh, we had a, a ready-made family right from the beginning. And I've been raising her since she was a little girl. And um, and we had two more girls of our own. And that is my major, I mean, that's my entire world. I know that sounds crazy, but I always wanted to be an actor. And I kind of dabbled for, you know, for a little bit. And then, and then we started a family. And that was kind of kind of the direction I went. Um, leading into, you know, into um, what I did before, <laughs> I guess, I oh, I also thought I'd be a teacher. So I did, also didn't want to go to school for very long, though. Uh, I'm not really like a sit still and, and do paperwork and essays type person. I like to be hands on. Obviously, that's, you know, which probably why I'm an actor. <laughs> I like to be in there and doing things and and, uh, and meeting people and all that sort of thing. So I did go to school for early childhood education. And then I had met my husband. So I did a, stay, um, a home daycare. So I did home daycare and I was able to stay home with my girls. And then when they were getting a little bit older, I was looking for a job and I found, I found a job at Toyota in the health center. And so I worked there for a couple of years. And then we moved to the States. And so, and it was for my husband's job. So that's when I was like, well, the kids are getting bigger and maybe now I'm going to kind of move into this direction. I heard an ad on the radio for some background for for a film that was coming up and that was kind of where it started. I mean, really started. Yeah. You had said you always wanted to be an actor. Always. Where did that come from? (laughs) Probably the fact that I could be somebody different. I, that sounds so crazy, but, um, you know, I think as we grow up, we're so uncomfortable in our own skin anyway. Um, you know, the whole like middle school and high school, and we don't really know who we are and being someone else was easy and not easy. Yeah. I don't mean like acting easy. I mean like that being, you know, stepping into someone else's character. I can be somebody else. No problem. Like this, this moves me anxiety being me. <laughs> Give me a script and let me play someone else's character and I'm fine. Um, but also, I really, I, I didn't really kind of touch on a whole lot of creativity when I was younger, and and I wish I had a, I, I had done that more. But um, but I think that was my only kind of creative outlet. I loved musical theater. Uh, I did Oliver Twist, and I remember I was Mrs. Bedwin, and I was just, I took that so seriously. Like I was going to be the best Mrs. Bedwin there was in the entire world, and you know, in my mind, I probably was. <laughs> I bet you but, uh, yeah. And then, you know, years coming a little bit further into that, I did uh, Disney's The Music Man. 
And that was a blast. I mean, if you can be on a set like that, first of all, a Disney set just is crazy, but um, that many people singing and dancing and just loving life. And um, it actually was snowing. I want to say it was snowing during the 4th of July parade. They kept bringing out red blankets to like warm us up. And I remember thinking, this is the best thing of my entire life. Who thinks that when you're that? (laughs) I don't know. So I was like, yes, okay, this is clearly what I want to do because I hate the cold and I'm loving every moment of this. So. (laughs) <laughs> was that the 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 background movie the background work that you were doing that you said uh so that's what i mean that's way back in the day but uh oh. like the music man i want to say from that that's from like oh two mm. um but that was in um millbrook ontario like tiny little town they whole revamped the whole thing so that was my real first like real onset experience um the background movies that i started doing in kentucky were um were uh, like Lifetime and and Hallmark and that sort of thing, which then led into, I was like, wow, I really like this. I'm going to, I'm going to make a go of this. I started doing, I did uh, Western University student films first, and then went into short films and then into feature films and just kind of, kind of grew from there, which was fantastic. I had a, I'm going to say I had a really I had a really great group of people that were constantly, you know, supporting and helping. And, I, and that's huge. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Who would you say that is? Like, who do you have supporting you in your community? Because, again, uh, as an aside, I know if, when I've chatted with other people who've come into this not having a, say, theater school background, it's hard yeah. to sometimes find that community of support because you don't graduate with one. Um, right. But that sound, it sounds like you have a fantastic community. So I'm going to tell you a really fun, like, onset story, which is kind of how how this whole thing transpired to turning into something. Um, I was doing background on a film and it was supposed to be a summertime, beautiful wedding, you know, open toed shoes, tiny little cocktail dress. And it was February and in the minus, I don't know, minus 25 or something. So this scene was supposed to be outside and that's where we did the whole setup. The whole setup was done outdoors and the pond was, frozen and our mouths are like you know all this (laughs) lovely steam is pouring out and you can it was just it was not going to work so they moved us indoors into this barn it was still cold um you know it was concrete floor and the slats and I ended up catching my mittens on fire because I was standing so close to the the heater (laughs) like it was it was a day it was it was a day but there was this young guy and he was walking around with a backpack and and he almost knocked over the wedding cake with his backpack. And I was like, Whoa! And then I'm like, oh, shoot, I shouldn't have said anything. What am I doing? I can't, I'm not supposed to talk to, pretty sure he's a producer. I'm not supposed to talk to him. Which led into me also um, chatting with the other, another actor who uh, was also driving uh, all the other actors for the, for the movie at the same time. So he came in for a couple of weeks, did his scenes, but also drove. And I said to them at the end of the day, I was like, guys, I feel so bad for you. You know, you're not from here. It's freezing cold. We've been out here all day. Come to my house and I'll make chili. And I think they thought I was crazy. Like, who is this random person sitting in background going, come for dinner? You know, oh, yeah, sure, bring everyone. Bring the actors, bring the directors, bring the producers. And they're like, it's never going to happen. Um, they all came. They all came. And we had so much fun. I mean, it went into the wee hours in the morning. And every movie that they did after that in Kentucky, I held a huge, massive dinner. And we were the, we just became so close, like such good friends. And so that became my community where, and also best friends now as well. You know, we were really close and uncle to my, they're uncles to my kids. And, um, but they gave me the direction. Uh, So it's my friend, Anthony and Steve, and they were the ones who constantly were like, okay. And they call me mama, by the way which at first really bothered me. I was like, stop calling me mama. Like I'm this old lady. It's just terrible. But um, they're like, mama, you need to get headshots. Mama, this is who you need to see. Mama, this is what you need to do. Mama. And I was like, okay, okay, okay. So I didn't graduate with, you know, with this group of people, but I somehow fell into this wonderful family of film um, who are just amazing. (laughs) Yeah. That, so that's, that's community. I know that yeah, sounds that's love that is lovely. That's such a lovely <laughs> story. <laughs> and yeah. so what brought so that was in Kentucky. Right. Yeah. So then what brought you? So that's a community in Kentucky that you have and right. still have, which is oh, fantastic yeah. Oh, yeah. to yeah. keep that and maintain that. 
does that do they ever do they ever come up what brought you to what brought you back to Ontario and then do they ever come up here well, so my husband, so I've, already been back, I've already been back to Canada for uh, since last December. So if you can imagine, I, I really didn't have it the best time. We were in lockdown. We were, yeah, yeah. Uh, then I had to quarantine because we come from another country. And oh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so, so they haven't been here and I haven't been there. And, you know, hopefully that will happen sooner rather than later. But um, the, uh, We've de- I mean, we still keep in t- contact. In fact, I just had to text them and I was like, you guys need to stop texting me because like now it's showing up on my screen and it's going to be super awkward and embarrassing when I'm like, what? Oh, no, sorry. Um, but yeah, so we moved back in December. It was for my husband's job. And um, that's when I was like, I have no idea where to start here. What, like, how do you, you grow something, you build something, and then all of a sudden you're in another country. So I had this... Um, I went online as soon as I got, as soon as I got here, I was like, okay, I need to set up every possible Canadian account because I knew all the American accounts. I have to set up, what is this casting as a casting workbook? I get them mixed up now, casting workbook. And okay, that's new. That looks like a Canadian thing. Mandy, is that a thing? I don't know if Mandy is a thing. Okay. Let's, let's sign up for that one. And I just put my profiles on everything. And I spent, you know, a good solid couple of weeks just sitting in front of the computer, uh, going on everything. And then That's when I joined in with Alona uh, for her class. I was extremely blessed. I got my first union credit pretty quickly with Alona, actually, which is what led me into taking classes with her. She's phenomenal. She's so good. Um, And also just a sweetheart. So just so sweet. Um, And then I signed with this wonderful agency, Heroes, uh, Hero Artists in Toronto, and they have been nothing but phenomenal and supportive. Um, and then I've been taking, uh, I, I started with Second City and then in Toronto, but it was online, of course. And, and I've got the distance that kind of goes against me a little bit. I'm not, I'm not central to, to Toronto, but um, so a couple of hours isn't, isn't so bad. And during the pandemic, it was really great. Like when it was hardcore and you weren't supposed to be on the road. I had a couple of jobs in Toronto and I was like, look at me. I'm like the only person on the road. This is great. It took me no time at all. Um, but yeah, it was really just about like, how can I meet anybody possibly? Because I don't know, I don't know anyone and I didn't know where to start. So mm-hmm. just a lot of Googling. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, classes, so. and, and classes. And I think it's funny because, you know, music, like, okay, tell me about your first act and how it influences your second act. But for you, it's so interesting because it's almost like your first act was acting in America. And then your second act <laughs> is acting in Canada. Right, kind of. they are, yeah. uh, they're pretty. Would you say are they different? Are they the same, or what have you noticed between the two uh, places? It's kind of hard for me to judge because I went from, you know, kind of working with the same group of people in the same network and that sort of thing. So I didn't really branch out that too, too much. I mean, every so often I did, and then again, I was very lucky if I branched out into a different network, then I, I ended up working with that group of people quite a bit as well. Um, and and I'm I'm so grateful for all of those opportunities, but. The, uh, but when I came here, I then joined the union. So it's kind of, I've also like went non-union to union. Um, and so that's a huge difference. Um, and just not knowing anyone to knowing people, but I don't know. I, I would definitely say that my, <laughs> my, my first act, um, was parenting. Yeah. And I only say that because that's what I did for so long, even having a home daycare. And even when I worked at, worked at Toyota, I would, you know, I wouldn't necessarily call that my first act. I would definitely say it was, you know, being a stay at home mom. Mm-hmm. And that definitely prepares you for pretty much everything. <laughs> uh, flexibility, uh, adaptability, um, you know, playing the mom role, which at this age, that's, I mean, you know, we, we, it's like, yep. mom, 40, mom, 40, mom, yep. 40. You're like, yep. hey, I can do that, you know? So, and, and the interaction with children, I'm constantly, constantly working with kids. So I know how to relate to them, bringing that early childhood education degree in with me as well. And, and also, again, just being a mom, like get on their level, kind of be part of it and make it realistic, right? Mm-hmm. So um, I know I'm kind of getting off, off topic there, but, so, but I would definitely say my first act would be a stay-at-home mom, really. Yeah. And it's funny because you were saying how the people you met in the States through the acting world called you mama anyways. Right. So not only right? were you parenting your children, <laughs> you're parenting the kids in your daycare, you're parenting these individuals <laughs> in the entertainment industry. Yep. Your, your, your first act was mama. Yeah. Well, and it's, I think that's a lot to do with the fact that I kept feeding them. They kept coming back. 
But, yeah. <laughs> is there anything that's been surprising that you've really used from that first act of yours from being mom that you now use in your acting? Something that's been really surprising? Um, not really that it's surprising. I mean, I definitely... I'm a very organized person. So the organizational skills that I developed, you know, being, being at home or, or being at Toyota or whatever, um, that has definitely come into huge play here. As you know, we, everything's last minute. Everything is last minute. Like, Oh, Hey, do you want to go on vacation? I'm not really sure if I can go on vacation then. Cause I might have this thing. Um, and so that you know, trying to plan and organize for things that could potentially happen or may not happen or could happen this morning. And, you know, do I have something that I need to take care of that? So my organization in life has really prepared me, I think, for trying to structure everything around this one thing that I really don't have control over. Mm -hmm. Um, and we don't, we have no control over, over what's going to happen or, Hey, you have a call back tomorrow at 3 PM. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Yeah, great. Yay. How yeah. am I going to, how am I going to manage that? So I would definitely say my organizational skills have really uh, come very much into play, which I didn't expect. I didn't expect that that was going to be a thing that I'd really have to, to work around. I will say um, it's probably made me a better person not having full structure on my life all the time um, and letting go a little bit. So, which you got to do. So I was just about to ask you, how does it feel not having control? Because we have zero control in this industry. I'm working on it. I'm working yeah. on it. Um, I feel you. Yeah, it's uh, it's challenging sometimes. But um, again, I have a really great support system at home too, right? So the other night, my daughter came home and I was like, hey, I've got this audition. Um, I really need your help. Can you help me? And she's like, can I wait till tomorrow? And I was like, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I know what's happening right now. Can we just do it right now? She's like, can you just be a little flexible? I'm like, okay, okay. Yeah, tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow's great. That's great. And by the, like, the reason I said my daughter is because she's so good at reading. She's such a good reader. Um, my husband is terrible. God love him. But like, he is, he's like, and then there was, I'm like, no, what are you doing? <laughs> Give me something something, anything, you don't have to act it, but, but like, can we, can we maybe try that again? <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I definitely am working on the, on the not having control. It's funny. Cause one of my, one of my friends, Kate actually said to me, she's like, I have to say of all the professions that you decided to pick, I can't believe it's this one, given that you are so like, hold on tight to things. And she's like, and you have no say on what's happening. I was like, yeah, I don't know how that happened. I really don't. But I don't know. There's certain things that stand out that you kind of go, oh, okay, that makes sense. Like, this is why I'm here. Um, but I don't know. I just love it. I just love it. Yeah. And I think, you know, sometimes releasing that control can be like a big weight lifting off your yeah. back sometimes. And yeah. that's when I think, I know for me personally, when you can kind of get into the flow of the scene is when you're just like, oh, just let it go and just say the yeah. lines and do the thing and stop over analyzing everything. It yeah. feels, it feels good to do that. It's terrifying, but it feels good. <laughs> it is terrifying. It is. Um, I'm actually taking a, a classes monthly or weekly classes now with um, Sherry Shaw studios out of LA. And she is very much about like letting go, letting it all release and just being, and it's hard. It's hard, but it's definitely a different approach for me because I'm not a shake it all out. I'm focus, 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 mm -hmm. and I'm letting it go. So yeah. just different. Has there been anything that has really surprised you about the entertainment industry as a whole coming into it a bit later on in life? Um, not really. Uh, and I may, maybe it should, maybe it should surprise me. I feel like everything kind of makes sense to me. I, I understand it. I, I see where people are coming from. Um, I love, I love the, and this is gonna sound really crazy. The only thing that I, that really surprised me was the relationships that people build. Um, and that's not an industry as a whole, but I mean, as our profession, I never ever, ever, ever thought that I could spend two weeks with strangers 
and fall in love with them or connect with them on such a different level and have them as someone who is your lifetime friend that you may never see again. Yeah. Like that is the craziest thing to me. And I mean, I, again, I've been very lucky. I have some people in my life that, you know, we worked together four years ago and we still talk weekly or monthly or whatever. And still on that deep level where they're so special and important to you. And I have no idea when I'm going to ever see them again. So that surprised me. That took me off guard. I wasn't expecting to go into something. And it's every time you go into it and you're like, okay, I've got two weeks or I've got a month or whatever with these people, this, this group of strangers, all different backgrounds, all different ideas of how they want to bring something together, but you all have one common goal. And at the same time, somehow you end up all working so beautifully together. And now granted, I'm not saying it's all the time. There's some people, you know, sporadically for the most part, everyone is phenomenal and everyone's working for this common goal. And then, and then you have the off time where you get to know them personally and not just as a, not just in the profession. And you're, you know, you're together a lot. Um, I wasn't expecting to love people that much, like in such a short period of time. Yeah. And I, I think it has to do with the, like you were saying, common goal yep. and the complete utter vulnerability that we're thrusting on strangers, yeah. that we are all thrusting on strangers, right? Especially yeah. in this time of Zoom where you log in. And I know for me, the I still keep in touch. We still keep in touch the group of my original Second City Improv One. This was in Chicago. This was years ago. We still yeah. email each other. Because yeah. you pop up on the screen and we're all from different places all over the world. You've never met before. And you're like, okay, I'm going to trust you with my life right now. Yeah. And my career. <laughs> yeah. Everything. Let's do this. Yeah. Yeah. And they do the same. They put the same trust in me. Yeah. So, yeah. I, think I know. So there's a, there's a level of competitiveness that I was expecting and I didn't, I have yet to see it. But I think it's because, especially here in Canada, we have to support each other as, do. as actors in this community. There's not yeah. many roles. There's tons of us. If we don't yeah. support each other, the community's not going to flourish. You know, my the uh, the woman that I'm taking classes with, Sherry Shaw. She um she talks about compare and despair, and it talks about it a lot. How we like compare ourselves against other people, and then we go into this like you know despair mode of like, oh, that's not me. Oh, I wish it was me. Or that's not how come this person's getting all. And you just, you can't, you can't do that. But it's funny because I don't really see that here. Um, I know people internalize, I, I get it. People do it at home, but I, it's never been a, like someone's never trying to, I have, I'm not saying never. I have not experienced someone trying to step on you, someone trying to push you out, someone trying to, we're all, we're all doing it for, for the same reason, because A, because we love it. And if you're not doing it because you love it, then you're in the wrong, you're in the wrong place. Yeah. Nope, there's no <laughs> um, point. Yeah. There is zero point. There is, <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm, you know, money's going out quicker than it's coming yeah. in sometimes. I'm, just I'm not like... in it for the healthcare benefits. <laughs> I'd go work at Starbucks if I was. <laughs> or the scheduling or, yeah. you know, all of those things. Um, but yeah, no, it's been, it's been really supportive and really wonderful. And, and, and I don't know what, just perfect. I I'm, sound like, I sound like I'm just like, happy ray of sunshine you're like it's just wonderful everything's sunshine and roses and I don't mean it like that I just mean if you first of all if you find something that you love which if you love the arts you you do um but if you find something that you love and you can feel that much passion towards then hopefully you're supporting everyone else in it too mm-hmm. hopefully but, take me back yeah. to when you did the switch I know you're saying when you moved to Kentucky you said okay let's see what kind of acting uh, avenues I can find and travel down. Was there something in your mind that helped trigger that? I know you're saying it's always been an undercurrent for you wanting to be an actor, but I know for a lot of people, especially people who are moms in whatever form that is in their life, that can be a very hard decision to kind of say, I'm going to try and strive for something. And there's a feeling of, Oh, I don't want to, it feels a little self selfish. I know I've definitely felt that. Yeah. Because you want, if you have your feet in two different buckets, you can't give 100% to either bucket. Yes. How did you, what was my question? How do you, how do you deal with that? But also 
what was, how did was I get there? That, yeah how did you get there yeah right. thank you so there, the trigger for me and this is going to sound crazy but it, it, it wasn't that I thought oh this is what I'm going to do today it was I heard it on the radio and I went huh I haven't done that in a while it was more like that like cool. ah, it's something to do on a Saturday afternoon I mean I didn't know it was going to I didn't know at the time that it was going to lead into pushing me forward and pushing me forward. I I really didn't know that it was going to lead into me taking a step back and making that time for myself and moving towards something different that was not at home. Mm -hmm. Um, Luckily enough, my kids have been along the whole way with me. Um, So if I'm on set, they've usually been on set. They They get cast all the time by, you know, by coincidence, like, oh, we need a mom and daughter. Oh, can you bring, can you bring Riley tonight? Oh, can you bring Abby tonight? Oh, you know what? We actually need both of them. Um, and so it kind of ended up falling into something that we were doing together, which was very cool and made it a whole lot easier for me in terms of making that transition out of it a little bit. Now I will tell you, they are not huge fans of sitting around and waiting. (laughs) So we have to do that in acting. What? Uh, apparently, I mean, sometimes, sometimes um, they thought it was really great the first day that they got tech day, like all day long. And then the second day they were like, yeah, I'm not sure about this. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas I was just like, you know, enthralled and I'm a people watcher. And so I'm watching people and then talking to everyone and, and reading. I also take the advantage of the time that I can actually, yes. I, I don't do that at home. Like I don't have a chance for that. Um, but Again, like making that, you know, stepping out of the, the one bucket and into the other one and having the two feet type thing. My kids are a little bit older. Um, they're very self-sufficient. Um, my husband now works from home, which made a huge change for us. Uh, you know, he used to be gone and traveling all the time. So I was, I, I had to be home, right? There was just no other option. Now we've rolled reverse, which is crazy after... We've been together 21 years. So for 21 years, um, you know, he's been the, he's been the person that travels and goes places. Um, and now it's my turn and it's great. And if I think things happen when they're supposed to happen, I do not think that I would have, um, enjoyed this in my twenties. I don't think I would have, um, put as much care or thought or, and I don't know what your day is like, but like I get up and I start, I, I, I read several chapters out of a book. I've made a deal with myself now because I actually really enjoy reading like for fun and I'm not a huge like reading to learn. Um, (laughs) So I made a deal with myself that if I read a book to learn that I get to read a book for fun and read, you know, like, you know, learn something, fun something. But again, you you know, you're learning things from all aspects of life. But um, so, but I get up in the morning and I start that. I read several chapters of whatever book that I'm reading. Um, I do my manifestation meditation, which is also a new thing for me, um, just to, you know, kind of center myself a little bit and calm myself. Um, cause I'm very busy, <laughs> um, trying to be less on social media and more focused on classes and, and coming down into my, my little room here. Um, and every little bit that I've brought in, I have put back out into, you know, financially into, into this, but again, I've had the support to be able to do that. So, Mm -hmm. um, so my kids are great. They're always helpful and they don't make me feel bad about anything. I have never knock on everything. I have never missed an event yet. So I almost did once it was my daughter's birthday. We were shooting on October 31st, which also happened to be trick or treating. And I thought I was missing both of them. And I was filming the series, the dark, and Kevin Sizemore, who was playing, uh, who's the lead, who was my husband, um, I came in and he was like, isn't today your daughter's birthday? And I said, yeah, of course, like, <laughs> he's like, we need to switch the schedule. Guys, we need to switch the schedule. And he went to the producers and director, Chip Rossetti, and, and they had a chat and they changed the whole day. And I was home. I went trick-or-treating and was there for her birthday. So again, you know, and that didn't have to happen, but again, having that support, you know, so they were, they gave that to me. They gave that day to me, but my kids were like, you have to do this. You have to do this. Do not turn the series down. You have to do it. Um, so I got it from both ends. I got, you know, I got really lucky. That's awesome. Do you have any advice for anyone who might be considering shifting into a career in the entertainment industry from a first act being mom? Uh, 
my advice? <laughs> um, sure. Let me Take see. Good kids. <laughs> right. Um, no, I would have to say, unless you are fully prepared for the time and energy that is going to go into it, maybe don't do it. Um, but, but no, I would say have a, have a, a village. You have to have a village set up first. Um, and the reason I say that is because if my husband's not around, I need someone else to back me up. I have friends, I have family. They are all supportive of what I do. They know that it's last minute. Um, I've stopped apologizing for being a last minute person when it comes to those things. Um, that's my job. This is my job. This is how it works. I can't structure it. Uh, if you got called away to a, a two week conference, we'd have to work around that too. Right. So, um, and having grace with yourself because it's hard. It's not easy. Um, you're going to have days where you're going to think, what am I doing? And why am I not there for, you know, for, for this with my kids or why am I not there? And you are going to have moments where you feel like maybe I'm being selfish and this is wrong. And I made the wrong decision. Um, but having said all of that, having your priorities straight, because if, if you get lost in like, Oh, this is great. This is fun. This is me. And forget where all of those other things are supposed to come into play first. It stops making you who you are. Mm. So I would say my advice is have your priorities in order. Um, give yourself grace. Study your butt off because other people have had 20 plus years above you. And, and talk to people, know them, be kind. Oh my gosh. And for the love of everything, please be kind on set. Like <laughs> it, it goes yeah. so far, but it yeah. also just like, I don't understand why some people are cranky. If you're cranky, you're in the wrong place. Like it, it yeah. can set the tone for everybody in such a, such a negative way or such a positive way. So, um, yeah, learn, 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 learn. Uh, yeah, we are, we are in the same boat. We are up against girls who are women who have been doing this since they were children and who, you know, mm -hmm. it's different. We don't have the experience. Yeah, absolutely. It is. So. Now, speaking of your family, how would they describe what you do for a living? It, de it depends on which kid you ask. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I bet. Um, my oldest daughter's like, I don't know, sometimes she goes to work and like, I don't know, does acting. <laughs> she, she goes in the basement and I don't know, yeah. does acting. She disappears. Um, no, all of my girls, will. they don't really say too much about it. They're just like, yeah, my mom's an actor. Um, it used to be, oh, my mom's gone because she's doing this thing. Um, and they really didn't understand what I was doing. Uh, and then I will say my youngest, my 10 year old, whenever I have an audition or something, I get super excited, probably a little too excited. And so yesterday I was like, I have good news. And she's like, oh my gosh, she's got another audition. Oh, nobody else gets this excited about work, mom. <laughs> they should. They should. She's like, you don't even know if you have it. You're already excited. I was like, but I... I said, I'm excited because I get to do something I love, even if I don't get it. I get to go downstairs into my little space and I get to, you know, bring something to life again. Um, and my husband, he's just, my husband is phenomenal. I, he's, he's just like, this is you, you do you, this is your time, you, you know, whatever. Um, I say, I've got a class. He's like, okay, I've got to go travel. Okay. I'm, it's your turn. Go do it. Um, so yeah, if they're all, they all just say I'm an actor, I guess. <laughs> My youngest that's, probably thinks it's super weird. <laughs> I think that's so that's so lovely because a lot of times it's there's there's some hesitation with announcing that to the world, right? Like I'm an actor. <gasps> you yeah. know, you're it's like we're expecting the questions and oh, what have you been in? What have you done? What have you been in? Oh, really? Well, like it's that? funny because I made the mistake. Um, I never really again, saying that word sometimes is like, okay, I'm really claiming this. This is yes. this is now my job, this is, okay. and a lot of people will say, oh, my job is like, I work at, you know, Starbucks or, or I'm a nurse and, and I, I act sometimes. And I don't yep. want that to be, that's, that's not my job. My job is an actor. And, but it took me a really long time to get there. But I will say I made the mistake first when people were like, so what do you do? And I'm like, um, I'm in film. And they're like, oh, I was like, whoa, no, 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 no. I'm an actor. Let's reverse. Like, <laughs> like, like 
why is she not saying what it is she does? And it was really right. funny because someone just took it and assumed like the worst. And I'm like, yeah, oh my God. never saying I'm in film ever again, like ever. <laughs> I don't know. In the film industry. Don't say that. It's apparently yes. a, a really bad thing. People are um, so funny. <laughs> so right? Just just assumptions. So now I just do say. And most people assume it's theater. Mm, interesting. Interesting. Yeah. I wonder why that but, is. I don't know. Because you're maybe because you're past at all over twist. No, I mean nobody <laughs> would nobody would really know that. I think it's more just people don't assume uh mm. film and television. I don't know, but that's yeah. or commercials or whatever. But Mm-hmm. Um, and sometimes it's really funny. I, I've been taking some dance lessons and this guy's like, I think like you look familiar to me. And I was like, I doubt that. <laughs> and sure enough, he had seen, um, a film that I was in and he knew what it was. And I thought that was the weirdest thing. And so he's like, how come you didn't just say that? How come you didn't on your paperwork? How come you didn't? I was like, what do you want me to say? I don't know. I'm afraid to write it sometimes. I'm like, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, like you were saying, if you write it out there or you put it out there in the world, you have to claim it. And then there's yeah. these um, expectations that come from no one except for ourselves. You yeah. So what have you done people are going to expect things. Yeah. Uh, auditions. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Took classes. Yeah. That's my job. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but it's hard for a lot of people to understand what it is you're doing. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and it's kind of, you know, I explain to people, I say, you know, you think about it if if you're in a job that you went to school for, like that's kind of my schooling right now. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, as you grow in your jobs, you're constantly going to training seminars, you're on zoom meetings, you're having, you're going to conferences and that sort of thing. And it's the same thing for us. Mm -hmm. So, Mm -hmm. but again, it is hard for people to understand. Yeah. And I think whenever you say you do something within the arts, people don't put as much high priority on it as they do say like, you know, yeah. I'm a doctor, I'm a nurse, I'm a whatever. It's yeah. more of, Oh yeah. You know, arts equal passion project. Art doesn't equal job. So yeah, well, it's interesting. You know, kind of on that note, I recently actually just um, joined film access Northumberland, which is a uh, charitable organization that deals with, you know, community and promote promoting of, of arts and film and, Super excited. I'm also on the planning committee for their international film festival, which I attended last year. So that's really exciting. But they reached out to me last week and, and I joined in. So um, that is a lot of fun. But one of the things I had said to them was, it's really, truly unfortunate. Uh, like, I'm so grateful that I'm part of something that's bringing students in and showing them the love of the arts because we didn't have that. Mm. And it was looked at as like, oh, she's doing that. Oh, she's taking the easy way out. Oh, you're never going to do anything. Oh, what are you really going to do? Yeah. yeah. Um, what's your backup plan? Mm-hmm. Which, what's your backup plan? Why? Why, why, yeah. why? Well, ironically enough, this turned out to be kind of the backup plan, which is hilarious. Um, it was the plan and then became the backup. Um, but I think that was, you know, that's one of the reasons I'm so grateful to be, to be part of uh, of Film Access Northumberland is because now I get to do this reaching out to students and say, yes, you can do this. Yes. Someone cares. Yes. We love film. Yes. We want you to grow and build something. Um, And so that's super exciting. Yeah. That's great. I love what you said. Yes. Someone cares. Right. Yeah. So key. So key. Yeah. Well, that maybe you already answered my question because uh, is there anything I like to ask? Is there anything right now in this dead of winter, frigid, cold? I don't know what it's like outside for you, but it's minus like twenty something up here right now. Is there it's anything so cool. that's getting? Is there anything that's getting you excited? I know it's kind of a downtime for us in the industry, but anything that's getting you excited um, these days? Definitely working on this planning because yes. I also am watching um, the fe- the films that are coming in right now, and they are so good. Um, and rating them and that sort of thing. So that's been something totally new and very exciting. And our theme this year, which also is just amazing, is what unites us. Um, So the films have to represent that and that, you know, that's just beautiful. So I'm really, really grateful. Um, And finding new people to come and do master classes. Last year they had, um, or we had, I guess, um, uh, Yannick, Bisson from Murdoch Mysteries and um, Christina Jennings, CEO of Shaftesbury and executive producer. So yeah, so they were our masterclass last year and this year it's going to be a three-day event. And so that's what I'm also working on is, you know, coming up with some ideas on who we're going to have in and what we're going to do. Um, So planning, 
yay. Watching films, yay. Um, my classes that I'm taking right now, uh, I'm loving so much. Um, and the books that I'm reading, but also, you know, yes, it is a little quiet, but I've had a, a few auditions and that kind of just keeps you, keeps you moving. But, um, so yeah, it can be cold outside. I'm okay with it. I'm using that time. I think appropriately, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, ab absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> um, is there anything you want to add or promote or any kind of final last words of wisdom? I mean, cause you're, you're crushing it. You're doing so much neat stuff. I think your positivity is so important at this time of year. <laughs> thank you. I think yours is too. I love oh, it. Thanks. I love your energy. It's always so great. Um, promoting. Uh, yeah. Do you mind if I, for a moment, just kind of talk about something? Please so, do. Okay. So some people do know that I did um, this feature film called A Father's Fight, which um, is just an amazing, an amazing film, a, a feel good film about fighting for what matters, fighting for what's important in your life. And that film, I don't know if many people know, but it actually is the first film to ever have premiered in the jail system, in the prison system. So it went to every tablet in the state of Indiana, to every prisoner, um, to be able to watch our film. And actually they loved it so much. They asked for it back. So it's actually been put back into the, <laughs> um, back on their tablets. An um, incredible thing. It's very cool. We've had a lot of people change their lives, re, you know, reunification with um, fathers and daughters that actually were both in prison systems and then came together that were allowed to kind of uh, reunify. So that's been amazing. Uh, baptisms as well. Just people choosing a better life um, because of this film. So I, I really like it's something that's really near and dear to my heart. Um, the budget was non-existent so it's also amazing that it went into theaters it went you know it, it's now on streaming platforms so I'm really proud of it but that group um, is now doing another feature film and I'm also in it called I Can and I really love if people could look it up because that's going to be a beautiful beautiful and it's a true story real life story um, and I'm really excited about it so that's, and there's some big news coming out soon, like within the next week, that is really, really awesome for, you know, for the production as well. For the so, production. Okay. I'll put a link to it in the, in the show notes. I can't, I'll put a link to yeah. it in the show notes. So people can find yeah, it. Yeah. It's on Facebook. Yeah. We do have a page on Facebook so they can follow that. And, and uh, I don't think they do Instagram yet, but, um, and yeah, and a father's fight. So those are two that I'm super proud of. And um, everyone's, I mean, talk about building family. We made that movie during a pandemic. So <laughs> Wow. What a legacy to leave. Like Thank you. Yeah. what an incredible thing to be part of. That's so interesting. Huge. So yeah. Beautiful. So beautiful. really, like I said, really proud of it. Um, and then, um, yeah, there's a, a horror film that I was part of that we also filmed during a pandemic and I don't, I'm not sure how much I can say, but it did come out that we did film it in a hotel and all quarantined together. That's how we shot the whole thing. Um, so that's called Sorry About the Demon, and that should be coming out soon. So that's pretty exciting. Um, but yeah, talk about creativity. I mean, everyone had to figure out how to manage doing a film during a pandemic yeah. with lockdowns and numbers and all that jazz. Yeah. So I was saying to my <clears throat> my spouse, my spouse loves to, to critique film and watch film. He's a big movie buff. And I said, yeah. to him, like, you know what? I don't think I'm going to ne I can't negatively critique anything that was made during the pandemic because <laughs> regardless of what it looks like you were able to produce yeah. content during a pandemic yeah congratulations <laughs> oh yeah right? yeah I'm I mean I'm super impressed it's so crazy like I actually know a friend she shot a film and she had to kiss a tennis ball on a pole and then they switched out the tennis ball and put it on for the guy and he kissed the tennis ball and then they edited them together so that they wouldn't kiss or come into contact with one another I'm like I don't, I don't know how that would feel. I feel like that'd be very weird. That is amazing. I'm like, we have so, the weirdest job. <laughs> we have the weirdest job, right? Like, so what'd you do today? Uh, I made out with a tennis ball. So that's yep. cool. Yeah. Yeah. But don't worry. You work. Feet tall and yeah. uh, had some fun. And no COVID. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wasn't the ball. I mean, who knows, right? <laughs> oh my gosh. But I thought that was crazy. So. Amazing. Oh, well, Sarah, thank you. This has been awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time and your very, you know, your busy schedule and doing all your great work to come chat. I love your story. 
I love Thank it. you for having me. I'm very glad that we got to talk. Thank you for tuning into this week's episode of Second Act Actors, and thank you, Sarah, for being my guest this week. Her film, A Father's Fight, that she was chatting about in this episode that circulated around the prison system, is currently available on Amazon Prime, and I hope you will check it out. It's phenomenal. Get your tissues ready. I hope you'll tune in next week for another industry episode. I am talking to one of Toronto's top headshot photographers who will have a ton of advice for you regarding the most important thing, honestly, in our arsenal as actors. Headshots. Hope you'll tune in next week. Bye.